I would like to say to you that this is going to be fun. You're going to have a good time. Uh, I see a lot of you, a lot of you down there, are, uh, you seem to be enjoying yourselves. But John Doyle is upsetty spaghetti, okay? And John Doyle's feelings are more important than our feelings, okay? Because apparently, Beto O'Rourke and some other Democrats are attacking Christian freedom. So, I mean, pretty much religion's canceled. Let's fucking go. This is from your LGBTQ plan, and here's what you write. This is a quote. Freedom of religion is a fundamental right, but it should not be used to discriminate. Do you think religious institutions uh, like colleges, churches, charities, should they lose their tax-exempt status if they oppose same-sex marriage? Yes. Oh, boy. He's going to be so upset. Oh, God, he's going to be so mad. Looking forward to it. Okay, constitutional law hat going on. Pretend I have a hat. Look, this is what the constitution law hat looks like. It's an invisible hat that looks like my hair. It looks just like my hair. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. So there was a CNN town hall last week dedicated to LGBT rights, and of course this resulted in top Democrats calling for restrictions on religious freedom in this country. And so mm, what we're finding out, which by the way, though? virtually everybody with a functioning brain was able to predict, is that religion in this country cannot coexist with the normalization and the promotion of the LGBT agenda without compromising its position and its convictions, because virtually all of the Abrahamic religions, I mean Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, condemn homosexuality. And you can see this too in different Indian and East Asian religions and the way it's always worked in this country and the way it's supposed to work in this country is that if uh -oh. I am practicing a religion that teaches against those behaviors I am within my rights to refuse service to those people in any capacity so as to disassociate myself from behavior that is sinful in my religion if you are religious and you are anti LGBTQ plus um, basically anti homosexuality it says nothing about trans people it says nothing about anything else like like technically a, a a gay a gay trans person would be straight to them right so i mean there wouldn't be a big deal it has it says nothing about any of that so there are specific instances in the bible specifically uh you know thou shalt not lay with a man as one does with a woman and stuff like that and then there's some mentions about uh how rome uh is is a little gay um in the bible there's some other stuff. I mean, basically the same thing happens in the Torah because that's the Old Testament as well, parts of it. Um, and Islam is a little bit more um, bad about it. <laughs> They're a little more explicit. From the pulpit, you can... <laughs> it's... it's it's In America, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a thing. Okay, so you can be... The, you can preach that it is a sin to be homosexual. You can't speak on the political nature of the ma of marriage. You could speak on the act of sex. You could speak on the act of homosexual sex. You can't speak on the institution of marriage. The Bible doesn't say anything about the institution of marriage, um, insofar as gay people are concerned. Um, and gay marriage is a political position. Okay, so the reason that churches uh, can't endorse or oppose political figures or they can't take on political action from the pulpit, specifically the people in charge of the church, like per people that are there, I think they're called parishioners, um, members of the church can be as political as they want. You can't use the pulpit to preach politics, okay? And we all know this happens constantly, but um, this is based on a provision in the 1954 Tax Reform Act prohibiting all tax-exempt organizations from supporting or opposing, uh, political candidates. Um, it was put in, um, uh, by Linda B. Johnson, um, and there's lots of talk about this, but you, you, you can't take a political position. Roe v. Wade, you can't do gay marriage, uh, you can't use the pulpit for that. Now, once you're done with your service and you talk amongst friends, you can talk about whatever the fuck you want. It's a free country. You just can't use the the pulpit. So what happens is, if you if you are a church, you have tax exempt status until that point. The problem is we don't really enforce it. Uh, Pastor Jim Garlow uh, is one of the people that started this. Uh, I I I want to say. Uh, I, I don't remember where he's from, California or something. Um, in 2008, they started every year sending DVDs 
um, as part of the Pulpit Freedom Sunday, um, which is their movement thing. They started sending DVDs to the IRS, literally the IRS, um, <laughs> of them talking politics from the pulpit. Uh, uh, hundreds of pastors have participated in this. We talked about it before over on uh, Hugo and Jake uh, during our Bible study stuff. Um, this is a thing. This happens. Um, and and so far, no one has taken action because they don't want to lose votes. But let me tell you, Jake 2024, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm going after all these sons of bitches. Are you fucking kidding me? And I'm gonna and I'm gonna pay for secular schools in each of those fucking areas. It's exactly what I'll do. Vote Jake, twenty twenty four. My running mate will be uh, myself, but in a, in in the corn hat. It'll just be that. But now, what we're seeing instead is that not only will you be unable to refuse service to the LGBT community, if you even try, we're gonna ruin your business and ruin your life because you should have just baked the cake, bigot. Whoa! No, 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 no. That is not... Nope. That's not what it means. Nope. That is... We are talking about two entirely different circumstances here. One, you're talking about the uh, the the cake baker thing. He won that case. One is about tax-exempt status, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which is a church. And the other one is about uh, whether or not um, certain aspects of service are covered under the protection um, of your religious freedom, which is a, a very different thing. You don't not have religious freedom still. The First Amendment still exists. You're being a whiny bitch baby. And all, of course now, it's all come to fruition as a means to the ends of stripping religious liberty from the religious institutions in this country. And so basically what happened at this town hall, amongst a list of alarming things. Mm. Especially black trans women. I'm so sorry, I don't wanna take this away from you. But let me tell you something, black trans women are being killed in this country and CNN, you have erased black trans women for the last time. Let me tell you something. Um, as I know you- What's wrong with that? I mean, she was a little rude. Uh, and she bumped into that kid. But I mean, like, it's true. It's true. A little rude, but like, it's true and it's a big deal. It's a big enough deal to be rude about, I think. Totally right. Totally correct. You are aware. Quick. I mean, yes, also true. Democrats such as Cory Booker and Beto O'Rourke said that under their rule, religion would no longer be able to be used to justify discrimination. Beto O'Rourke went as far as to say that institutions that practice this discrimination will lose their tax-exempt status. Yes. Elizabeth Warren mocked men who support marriage by suggesting that any man who isn't in support of two men or two women getting married will have trouble finding a wife. My Instagram DMs would beg to differ. And I've got many Instagram DMs soliciting me for sexual stuff. Are you fucking kidding me? I get solicited. We this is just the nature of the fucking life, man. Come on. Come on. And then Pete Buttigieg said that when Buttigieg Religion is used to harm the LGBT community. It quote makes God smaller and it's an insult to faith. Yeah. Okay, Pete. We'll talk more about you in just a second, but first, we need to address that in many of these cases, particularly in the most famous one with the baker in Colorado who refused to bake a gay wedding cake, they aren't actually being discriminated against because of their sexual orientation. For example, in Colorado with Jack Phillips, the gay couple could have bought anything in his shop. No problem, no questions asked. But what he will not do is create a custom cake for their gay ceremony. So he wasn't discriminating against them. He was discriminating against their request. A what? How do you argue that that isn't discrimination? What? The only reason he won the, the Supreme Court thing was because it was artistic expression and that was a scary road to go down. A straight man could have walked into the shop asking for a cake advertising a gender transition party and he would have been turned down. And so what this comes down to is, really, should the state have the power to put a gun to your head and say, you will defy God and you will bake this cake? A gun to your head? No one's being fucking killed, John Doyle, you little bitch. Oh, God. It's not a gun to your head. Okay, here's the fucking, here's the difference, okay? No one is saying that you can't be homophobic in your house. No one's saying you have to vote for a particular politician. What they're saying is if you want a business in the United States of America, you can't 
You can't use your religious freedoms to deny people service. You don't have to have a business. No one is forcing you to have a business. This is how the market works. This is a regulation on the shit, okay? No one is, it's not a violation of your constitutional fucking rights. So the argument that it, it, it violates your religious freedom is bullshit because once you become a business owner, you give away some of your, your religious freedom. You don't get to be as discriminatory as you once were because now people's employment is at your mercy and you just, you just don't get to anymore, okay? In that specific scenario, you can go home and talk shit about that gay guy. It makes you a shitty person, but you can go home and vote against your employee's right to marry the person they love most. You can do that. No one's going to take your business away for doing that. What they're going to do is if you're a pastor, you're going to lose your tax-exempt tax status on your church, which you should. Okay? If you're talking about being against gay marriage, you can be against homosexuality all you want. You can't talk about the political implications of gay marriage. You just can't. It doesn't... Marriage isn't brought up in the Bible in, 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 in regards to homosexuality. I, I just don't understand why you don't understand. I think maybe you have like a little tiny tiny smooth brain. It's like frictionless. It, it, it doesn't offer any drag. It has the best swim times of any brain. And the answer to that question has always been no, and it will always be no, regardless of what the left tells you, and regardless of what fake Christians like Pete Buttigieg tell you. Pete Buttigieg, a self-identifying Christian that's going to tell you how Christianity teaches us to help the poor and sick, which in his language means expand entitlements and repeal the Hyde Amendment so women can use tax dollars to kill their babies, and then he goes home to his husband. No true Scotsman, you can't be a Scotsman if you like to kill babies. You're not Christian, Pete. You're a false prophet. You have evil working within you. How dare you? How dare you contort the Christian doctrine to suit your progressive agenda? That's not of my direct concern. I'm sure you'll have a great conversation with him about how you managed to interpret the scripture as a green light on sodomy and the murder of children, you lizard. So, so John's a Christian. <laughs> oh, oh, honey, calm down. Calm down there, baby. It's okay. It's okay. I'll put you to sleep, John. You're too wound up. You're too wound up. Imagine calling a gay person a lizard. I mean, in the Bible, they talk about killing babies a lot. So it sounds pretty Christian to me. I mean, it does sound bad. So I guess John isn't isn't uh, very familiar with Numbers 5, 11 through 31, um, the test for an unfaithful wife, where if uh, a man um, assumes that his wife may be cheating on him, um, then she is to go to the priest, uh, and the priest is to give her a bitter drink. And if she drinks that bitter drink... If she was unfaithful, she will miscarry the bastard child. If she is not unfaithful, then she'll be fine. So I guess I guess situationally speaking, for numbers uh, five, eleven through thirty-one, um, God is absolutely fine with 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 killing babies. Like I, I just don't think I just don't think that you can defend this. I don't think you can defend this. And I also don't think that someone that is, happens to be gay and Christian is necessarily a fucking false prophet here, huh? I don't think that maybe he he's, he, he might just be interpreting it in a different way. And, and you're like, nah, that's not okay. You can't interpret it that way. Um, okay, so hear me out. Hear me out. Um, I want to talk to John Doyle. I think John Doyle should come on here and talk to me about God because he's a fucking idiot. Um, if John, if John wants to come on here and have a debate anytime about the, the existence of God, and if God is evil, and, um, why homosexuality should be just fine, uh, he should come on here. He should come on here. I don't think he will. He's, he's a little bitch baby. But if he does, uh, that'd be absolutely wonderful. Because, um, if, what, what, why would God be homophobic? Why would God be anti-gay? Now, John might say something to the uh, effect of like, well, they can't make babies. We're here for procreation. Okay, so then why does God make some people barren? Why does God make, 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 
bi biological women barren. Okay, what? Well, so they can't reproduce. Does he does he hate them? Because that's a big that's a big motif in the Old Testament. Um, it's a literary motif uh, that goes, uh, you know, like um, you know Abraham's wife, for instance. I think Rachel. Um, could be wrong. Uh, she she doesn't have a kid until she's like fucking eighty or some shit. Like, th this is to show that the, the power of God and stuff like that, and it's a motif of showing that, like, the Chosen Ones will be given, um, you know, preferential treatment. Uh, he violates biology all the time. Why would you say it's it's anything special? It doesn't say anything about transgender people. It says nothing about cutting your dick off and turning it into a hoo-ha. It doesn't say anything about taking titty skittles. It doesn't say anything about that. Uh, I don't understand why you'd be anti-trans. Maybe you could definitely justify being homophobic, but I don't think you could justify being trans. Uh, or being anti-trans. Um, I don't think you could justify les being anti-lesbian. You can only justify being anti-male gay. Because it doesn't say anything about lesbians. Um, it doesn't say that one lady can't lick the muff of another lady. Uh, it doesn't say two women can't can't love each other. It doesn't say anything about that. Um, it, it, it says that two dudes can't fuck each other like they... they have with women, which I guess means that um, you can't procreate with another man. Maybe, maybe you should just stick to it when when gay dudes and this is right around the corner, so you can like really stick your stick your flag in this ar argument. Uh, maybe when two gay dudes uh, start procreating, right? Two cis gay dudes uh, start procreating. Um, maybe then you can be mad because then it'll be two men lying with one another as if. You know what they do with women. So yeah, I think I think that that's probably yeah. I think that'd be it. There you go. You can justify that. That's that's scripturally sound. The rest of it doesn't make any sense. I don't think you can. Um... Yeah, yeah. Also, it's not anti-abortion. It doesn't say don't kill. It doesn't say don't abort in the Bible anywhere. It says thou shalt not kill, but then he violates it all the time. Like. Like, justifiable killing is fine all the time, and we can definitely justify it. So find me where it says, like, don't fucking kill your babies. It doesn't. It doesn't say kill you, don't kill your babies. And even if it even if it did, it contradicts it because he fucking, he fucking orders an abortion for unfaithful wives. I mean, like, pick your fucking poison, dude. I told, I told myself, I'm like, I gotta chill out. You know, these last videos, I've been pushing it, but I, I just, I can't help it, you know, but, um... We were we were warned about people like Pete Buttigieg to redefine Christianity to enable their own pursuit of vice in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Like Jesus? Literally exactly what Jesus did? This verse is exactly what Jesus did. For the time will come when people will not put up with their sound doctrine. Okay, so he's he's anti the old doctrine, okay? He comes to change it. Even goes so far as to claim to be the Messiah. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them in a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. A lot of people gathered around Jesus to hear what they wanted to hear. Oh, by the way, there will be salvation someday. I can die for your sins. You'll go to heaven if only you follow me. This earthly, like, pain is... is, is finite and you don't have to deal with it forever you're not going to shale anymore you're going to heaven and i'm taking you there buddy they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths so are we saying that the old doctrine isn't true and only the new doctrine is true how do you know that how do you know that jesus is lying to you well they wrote it down in the book and they died for it well imagine dying for it wouldn't you argue that there were people that believe in other gods that died for their gods which would make them exactly as valid as any christian that died for their god and their beliefs how is that not exactly the same thing like it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for you to take this timothy timothy second timothy four three four um it doesn't make a lot of sense for you to cite this without having any of this the awareness that yeah the guy you you pray to jesus did the exact same fucking thing but you dismiss it for reasons that aren't really justifiable other than you believe it Really, that's how you justify it. It really doesn't make any other any sense if you apply this verse to your belief system. I can't believe you are that inept. You are that brain dead that you didn't read this and go, how do I does that apply to my own worldview? The only reason you justify your belief in Jesus is because you justify your belief in Jesus. There isn't there isn't reason. Like, how do you know? How do you know 
that what you believe is the truth. The Satan, Satan tricks people all the time. How could Satan be, how, how do you know that Satan didn't touch, have his little fingers uh, on the keyboard of, of the prophet's brains at times? How do you know which ones are correct? Because whether you like it or not, men compiled that. Assuming you believe in the superstitious, which I don't, but assuming you believe in the superstitious, and all of those beliefs that go in there, and, and, and Satan is the great, is the great fucking, um, you know, trickster. How do you, how can you actually read anything without understanding? You say, well, you take it on faith. Sure, you take it on faith, but then how don't you apply this critical thinking to any of the other things that you believe? It seems to me really fucking vacuous and brain dead. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Does that sound at all familiar to you? The redefining of truth to suit one's own desires? Yeah, Jesus' entire fucking gimmick. The entirety of Jesus' sermon. Yes. The entire Jesus story. That right there. Yes. Correct. That is fundamentally what leftism is. They what? No. Redefine gender to suit their own desires? No, gender was defined by us anyway in the first place. Gender is defined the same way it always has been defined. You just don't like the new definition of it. The, well, it's not even redefined gender. It's just personally redefined, right? Like, I've got a wiener. Maybe I'm a lady. Like, that's the that's like literally the extent of it. Why do you care? Why does that matter to you? Why? 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 Why are you opposed to that? Are you worried that you're going to be attracted to someone that has a ding dong? Because that's a personal issue. It has nothing to do with them. Aren't they free to do whatever they want? It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that someone who has a ding dong has to be considered a man. They redefine human nature and the reality of unequal outcomes as a result to suit their own desire for utopia? No, 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 no. I'm perfectly comfortable with the difference of outcomes for everybody, okay? I think that's exactly what human nature is. People are going to succeed and fail always, okay? The difference is we're not trying to talk about the equality of outcome. And I know this is what John Doyle always wants to fucking talk about, right? People like him, um, anyone who thinks that socialism in general, and I'm not even a full fucking socialist, right? You guys haven't fucking bread tubed me yet. Bread pilled me yet. I'm part of bread tube, but only like honorary, right? So like, I'm not a full socialist. I, I think we could get there someday. I think that right now we, we need a, a split system. We're not talking about a quality of outcome, John. What we're talking about here is that we want everybody to have a baseline of life. We are to the point in human civilization, in American civilization, where we can be great. We can absolutely be great, and I can't think of anything greater than giving everybody a good quality of life. This is truly a motif for them. And again, in 2 Peter chapter 2, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Wow, it's almost exactly like Jesus again. But there are also fra false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. Jesus, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them. Yes, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Yeah, he made them a, a trinity instead of a fucking... <laughs> instead of a... Uh... Uh, a, a, a monotheistic god. It's a, it's a, it's a, tri it's a triune uh, monotheism. It's stupid. Um, bringing swift destruction on themselves. I'm pretty sure Jesus brought the swiftest destruction on himself. I'm older than Jesus. I think wasn't he 30? Didn't he die at 30? Many people, many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Wow. I mean, just literally apply any of this to Jesus. Apply any of it to Jesus. And, but will you? No. 33? Oh, well, I got a little bit to go. Um, don't crucify me at 33. That sounds lame. Um, so silly. So fucking silly. I don't know how you don't fucking apply this at all. How in the world do you look at your, your God and go, you know what? That's probably fine. I'm not going to scrutinize that whatsoever. Pretty fucking sketchy if you ask me. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Very chilling excerpts indeed, just in time for Halloween. Are they are they chilling? They seem pretty pretty much exactly what your fucking religion's founded on. Right, and I usually refrain from bringing religion into what I say, but I do so now only because we're talking about religious freedoms and we're talking about a man who was actively campaigning against those freedoms and freedom in general while acting as an ambassador of the founding religion of this country, which is Christianity. And any 
anyone who makes the argument, well, America's not a Christian nation because, oh, look, I found the treaty with Tripoli that says that the government of the United States is not founded on the Christian religion. Oh, look, I found the Virginia statute for religious liberty that says no man should be compelled to frequent or support any religious worship. Oh, look, I found the First Amendment that says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That must mean that America isn't a Christian nation. Yeah, it's like those people have a juvenile understanding of this country's founding as it pertains to the Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the religious beliefs and affiliations of the founding fathers, their traditional and the religious beliefs. What? So a lot of them were deists. If you don't know what a deist is, uh, you haven't watched my content nearly enough, but a deist basically is like, yeah, there's probably a thing out there that does that, that does stuff, maybe a prime mover, maybe a, you know, maybe they consider them to be a, a, like a cosmic thing. There's lots of versions of deism, but the basics of deism is that, yeah, there's probably an intelligence that has something to do with the creation of the universe, because I can't explain the creation of the universe. Keep in mind, this is before the science got there. Um, not a lot of deists anymore. Um... And then, uh, but I, I, I don't see them with their fingerprint on anything that goes on in the world day to day. J Thomas Jefferson with the Jefferson Bible deleted all of the, the, the gobbledygook, all of the miracles, all the magic, and just took out some teachings that he thought were good to make the Jefferson Bible. Like, these people, they're, like, the founding fathers were not as Christian as, like, the populations that moved, Okay. These guys were educated. They came out of the Enlightenment. They like these were thinkers. These were philosophers. A lot of them were like they wrote fucking treatises for God's sake. Only fucking like philosophy douchebags write treatises. This is so fucking wrong. It's so wrong. He literally cited three different pieces of evidence to say that while the country has Christians in it and most of the people that moved here are Christian, it isn't a Christian country. It's very different to have... Uh, uh, okay, so let's just say, for example, okay? Uh, England. As the Church of England, right? They have an established Church of England. You could say that England is more of a Christian nation than the United States because we don't establish a church, okay? Saudi Arabia is an Arab nation, okay? They use their doctrine to influence their laws. The United States is a secular nation. While there are majority religious people, the nation itself is not governed on laws in the Bible, okay? Or any other religion, right? And you don't want it. You don't want to get rid of the part where it says we shall not establish a religion. Because when you're not the fucking majority, which will happen, it's coming. It's either going to be atheists or, or Muslims. And I don't think you want either of those to be able to establish their own shit as, as the proper one. You may say, well, atheists already have secularism. No, because atheists have to deal with this. We still have to deal with you. And we, we have to deal with churches being tax exempt. John, do you think if I established this nation as an atheist, I would give you tax exempt status? The answer is fucking no. You wouldn't get tax exempt status. You're a church. I don't fucking care about that. You're lucky you have tax exempt status. There's no reason for you to have tax exemption at all. The idea behind it was, well, churches do a lot of charity work and they help people. But do you? Some do. But do you? Do you though? When you actively advocate against the rights of people that are just a little bit more marginalized than your white waspy ass. Is it really paying off? Not in my opinion. You're very lucky that that protection exists, and you should be you should be very grateful that I don't fucking try to take it from you. And historical religious makeup of the country, like really all they're doing, they're strawmanning. Because when they cite those quotes about the separation of church and state, it's, it's like true. they're basically just asserting that we're not a theocracy. Like, okay, obviously, but that wasn't the question. The question is whether or not this country is rooted in Christianity. Those are very big different. Okay. When you say it's a Christian nation, what you're implying is, when you say that, when you say, no, but actually it's a Christian nation, what you're saying, what you're arguing for, isn't that, oh, uh, yeah, Christian people founded it. No, what you're asserting and what you're asking, I can go back, we can look at it, when you said, when you invoked, America is a Christian nation. You were doing it as an argument to say, and we should extrapolate Christian values toward our laws. That's what you're saying. And what we're saying is, fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. You love
lost. You lose. You do not win. You are a loser, John. A loser, I say. Big sad. You're a big loser bitch baby. You don't win, you lose. You lose. You don't get to win. You lost. You get nothing. You get nothing. You're wrong. It's not a straw man. And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. And that's why they've declared war on Christianity. It's not that they're necessarily anti-religion, but they are explicitly anti-Christian. And they're anti-Christian because this nation is a Christian nation. I'm not anti-Christian because I'm, 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 what? I'm not anti-Christian because this nation is a Christian nation. What? I'm anti-Christian because it's incorrect. I'm anti-Islam for the same reason. Guess what? Islam is incorrect. You know what Buddhism is? Incorrect. Do you know what every religion is? Incorrect. And if something is incorrect, I'm not going to advocate for, for us to fucking build our worldview and our laws and our society upon it because that's a rickety fucking structure. It's like, it's like building a foundation out of sand. Oh, look, that part's wrong. I could just scoop that out. It's not going to work. It's a bad system. That's why not only are we not a theocracy, but we don't use Christianity to, to make laws. Sometimes there's some, there's some run-in. Thou shalt not kill. Okay, we're against murder, but our but we still have fucking. It's it's not thou shalt not kill. At any point, you're still all you're still super fine with police killings. You're still super fine with the death penalty. You you're fine with all sorts of stuff. You're fine with going to war and being hawkish for oil. You're fine with all of these things. So it's not really thou shalt not kill. It's ah, try not to kill so much. They weren't talking about Muslims. That's not why those white liberals were cheering. Those were cheers against Christians because- I mean, we would definitely agree- What? Those white people would still fucking cheer if it was like a Sharia candidate up there being like, Hey, um, um, I, I don't think- I think we should throw gay people off the roof. And then a bunch of people were like, Ah, oh, fuck that! If you have tax-exempt status, you're gonna lose it in your mosque if you say shit like that. People would cheer. What are you fucking talking about? It's not anti-Christian. It's just anti-fucking religion. We're not gonna. We're not gonna let you run our lives on your religious beliefs. They're your religious beliefs. It's why we have the separation of church and state. You don't get to apply your religious beliefs to anything that I got the fuck going on or anybody else. The only thing that you get subjected to is that people say this stuff. It's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, and they can fucking say it. Get over it, you pussy. You have to understand that leftism and progressivism are inherently anti-Christian because they seek to uproot the fundamental principles of this country and replace them with their destructive worldview that- Wait, wait, wait. The fundamental construction of this country has nothing to do with Christianity besides the fact that the people who were here first were Christians. If you don't count the indigenous people, which I know you fucking don't. ...masquerades as utopia, whereas conservatives, whether or not you identify as Christian or even believe in a god, ultimately what we're trying to conserve are the values that exist because of the Christian roots of our society. I mean... Nope. No. A lot of the things that you are trying to preserve exist because of the deist roots in our society and the atheist roots in our society. Like, what are you talking about? The fact that you have freedom of speech is an anti-church sentiment. Anybody, anybody realize that? Anti-church sentiment. They, a lot of the people came over here because they were not allowed to say certain things because of the English church or the Catholic church. They didn't want to be ruled by the church. They wanted to be ruled by themselves and they wanted their religion to be their own thing. A lot of these things are good because they are secular, not because they are religious in nature. Name a, re name a religious thing, name a, name, name a thing that is explicitly religious that contributed strongly to a major foundational element of the United States. And I genuinely can't think of it. And why do you think that only 32% of white liberals believe in a God, whereas 72% of white conservatives believe in a God? Okay. Do you want to look up the education statistics for liberals and conservatives? Because that that give you your answer that you don't want. Left-leaning people tend to be more educated. They usually have higher education. 
in in the humanities and things like that. Like you don't usually get people on the left educating in like a trade. <laughs> And most of the atheist conservatives with whom I've spoken, they acknowledge this. They usually tell me something to the effect of, oh, yeah, you know, I don't really believe in a God, but that doesn't mean I have to ignore the effects of Christianity, which is a perfectly fair statement to make. But you have to acknowledge that man is a religious animal. All throughout history, throughout all cultures, you will find religion. And so you can try to remove the man. Do we want to talk about the evolution of man and how it contributes to uh, the, the popping up of religions across the world? Because I don't think saying that Man is a religious animal is a pretty bad fucking argument for you, specifically if you're trying to defend Christianity, because it seems to me that that human beings have a proclivity. Uh, they're, they're, we're a little bit we're a little bit prone to make up our own religious beliefs depending on our demographics, depending on our geographic location, depending on the 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 weather, depending on the climate, depending on the temperature, depending on a lot of stuff. The 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 animals in the in the area. Like, do you think India has cow worship? If no cows exist in India, like, is that a thing that you think? I don't I don't believe it is. Do you think Do you think that, like, is it? It's, it's, it's pretty odd that every single god that I can think of is actively dictated by the local geography and climate. Every single god at their founding. Yes, uh, not Yeshua, Yahweh was a wartime desert god. Surprise, the Hebrews were always at war in the desert. Like, like, this is a thing. Uh, like, to say that, like, well, human beings are inherently religious, yeah, and most of them are false in your opinion, which doesn't necessarily give me the biggest amount of confidence in your opinion of religion. Like, what? This is not evidence for the success and validity of your religious belief. It is literally, it runs tantamount to your point. It runs in the opposite fucking direction. This is my fucking wheelhouse. You should not come on this channel, John. You will do poorly. You should not have a conversation with me, John. You are out of your fucking depth here. I am way too big brain for you. This is not where you want to be. I strongly suggest if anyone sends this to you, you should deny my invitation to come on here because you will lose all fucking credibility. You are worthless. You have no fucking arguments for this. Have you actually ever entertained any of these conversations in your life before? I feel like you're entirely unprepared to even even bring this up and the only reason you did it was so that you could make a 10 minute video and run a fucking mid-roll jesus christ and from god but you will never remove god from the man that's why as we watch atheism rise in this country we see these environmentalist movements that in effect act as religious movements as we've previously discussed we see a culture that worship they're making what? They're making fun of you and like Handmaid's Tale. Chip celebrities dedicates dozens of hours each week to keeping themselves updated on the lives of these people. Or most importantly, you note the overwhelming correlation between atheism and authoritarian leftism. Because if atheism were simply a rejection of the existence of a god, you would reasonably expect it to be about evenly distributed across the political spectrum. But it isn't. So it's not that they... Wait, do you think that people replace... So the argument here is that, that if you're an atheist, you're probably a socialist, which isn't the case because he just cited that they're Republican and conservative atheists. So I don't really understand what he's talking about here because he just contradicted himself yet a fucking again because he can't keep a fucking straight thought in his head. And he's talking to fucking 12 year olds that think people in suits are reasonable and you should listen to them. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, so you're saying that atheism, the lack of a belief in a god, is just replaced by something like celebrity worship, which I don't think happens. Meanwhile, we have Republicans that literally worship Donald Trump and are religious. It's like, it's like almost like they feed into each other. I don't really understand how you can ignore Trump worship from the right, including yourself, and then say, well, atheists are really the ones that do all the worship. Isn't it weird that you always have to say, yeah, but atheists are religious too, in your arguments against atheism as if you understand that religion is stupid inherently and unfounded and literally only runs on faith and your ideas and doesn't necessarily have any arguments to back it up? Isn't it weird that you always have to prescribe sort of that to atheism so you can bring it down a peg? Because instead of it being an intellectual uh, exercise in maybe understanding the world you live in and you're in having a, a broad cosmology insofar as your place in the universe is 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 uh uh talked about like like it's so fucking silly
It just seems to me that you're not very fucking equipped for this conversation, John. You don't, like, you, you just, you keep contradicting yourself. You don't seem to make a lot of sense. Don't worship a god. It's just that their god is the state. And they will put all their trust and faith in this god in exchange for promises of a utopian society. But okay, so again, you're making the argument that atheists are inherently socialist authoritarians, so communists, uh, like, all the way top left corner. While you advocate for top right corner guy, Donald Trump, while really most of us are bottom left corner, left libertarian, where we're like, do what you want. I want you to do what you want. Most of us aren't for planned economies and shit like that. Most of us aren't for dictators. Most of us are still for democracy and freedom of speech and all the stuff. Like, what part of what part is authoritarian? Are you saying that like, hey, it's harassment to constantly misgender someone? Are you saying that that's authoritarian like is that what it is is it authoritarian that you think that we shouldn't give tax exempt status to political actors because we shouldn't that they're actively working in the political process it's like if i talk about politics every day i should not be given tax exempt status i'd like that but i shouldn't be given it it doesn't make sense i talk about politics every day everything i talk about is political most things you talk about are political in general, but like, I actively advocate for Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and actively against Donald Trump every day. Do you want me to be tax exempt? Because you could argue that I could make this a little fucking corn cult and we could try for a 501c3 nonprofit and we could put, and I could just get a fucking private jet. That'd be dope. I mean, people said it was authoritarian to not allow slavery as well. So I'm just tossing that out there. I mean, is that who you want to be fucking with? Probably not scary thing about sacrificing your rights and your freedoms in worship of the state is that if you don't obey it, you get a bullet in your head. You don't! What are you fucking talking about? Who is being executed for this? God, you're so fucking melodramatic and stupid. Oh my god, so dumb! And my source for that is human history. My source for that is human history. In human history, all of human history has taught us that if, if you talk politics from the pulpit, and lose your tax exempt status, we also shoot you in the fucking head. In Minecraft. Okay. All right, buddy. Um, yeah. Hey, guys. You're fucking stupid. John Doyle is not prepared for this. He should, he should not, he should not come talk to me.